These are the announcements for the week of September the 6th. This Thursday night at 7 p.m., Pastor Randall will continue the community Zoom Bible study. I hope that you will message him for join details if you're not able to join yet. They just finished the book of 1 Timothy, and I hope that you will join them for their new study this week. Also, today is Holy Communion, so later in the service we will be partaking in the communion elements. So if you don't have uh, bread or juice before you, uh, you can run and go grab those items real quick. And at the end of the service, we will celebrate the Lord together through Holy Communion on this first Sunday of the month. Coming up in October, go ahead and mark your calendars for Charge Conference. Charge Conference is going to be October the 8th at 6 p.m. on Zoom and a location to be announced if possible. Next, we just wanted to reach out how we will continue to communicate through our phone message system, emails, and Facebook about the cancellation of in-person worship. We'll message you each Friday about the following Sunday. We look forward to worshiping in person soon, but we continue to monitor the color code through the Global Pandemics website. This is the standard that we've been using and the church council has decided to follow, so look for updates each Friday. The information about the Global Pandemics website can be found on the screen. Please contact the church office if you have any questions. Those are all of our announcements for the week. Welcome to worship. Good morning, Easter people. Welcome to Lafayette First United Methodist Church. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to be connected with you this morning as we worship together on this September the 6th, year 2020. Praise the Lord. Sing God's praise in the assembly of the faithful. For the Lord takes pleasure in the people. Let the faithful sing for joy. Let us worship the Lord together. Welcome, Welcome to worship. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that our unity will one day be restored, and they'll know we are Christians by our Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll guard each man's dignity and save each man's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians. They'll know we are Christians by our love. Good morning, children and families. Today's children's message comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. In today's scripture, Jesus is talking about restoring or restoration, about fixing things that are broken. And the things that are broken in today's scripture, Jesus is talking about our relationships with each other, about friendships and about family and about uh, relationships between two people or a group of people. And Jesus is not talking about if relationships will be broken, but when relationships break. So that's the sad part about the message this morning is that we are going to get in fights with each other. We're going to sin against each other, and we're going to break relationships with each other. We're going to just break apart. And so we need Jesus' help to fix those things, those relationships, those friendships with one another. 
And the way Jesus calls us to fix those things is for us to be in relationship with one another. We need to go to one another. So if someone sins against you, you need to go to them and talk to them about that. And there needs to be restoration. So we need to go to one another this morning. But that is really hard. We don't really want to fix things. And none of us like conflict. None of us like it when we're fighting with each other. And so we do a few things to stop that, a few things to protect ourselves from that conflict. And so one of the ways that we protect ourselves from that is that we kind of put on a mask. We say, we say that everything's okay, I'm laughing, I'm having a good time, nothing's bothering me, but on the inside, we're really not okay. We really do need some help. We need Jesus to fix our brokenness, fix the, the bad relationships that we have going on. So we put on those faces, we put on those faces that, are, that just aren't true to how we really feel. So we might say that we're really happy and that everything's okay, but on the inside, we're just really crying. We're sad. We need help. And so Jesus says that we should come together as a church. To come together is a group of Christians and help one another to restore our relationships between each other and also between God. And one of the things is sometimes people hurt us and they don't even know that they've hurt us. So how can we restore, how can we fix that broken relationship if we never go to them and let them know, I'm hurt, I need your help. So we must go to them and work things out, but dealing with conflict is tough, it's hard, it's not comfortable. But we must do that if we're going to love one another and listen to one another and forgive one another. So in our lectionary today, we have another reading out of the book of Romans. And in that it says that we should clothe ourselves with Jesus, that we should wear him and if we do that, we're going to act like Jesus and we're going to love like Jesus. And what better way for us to have the example of loving one another so that we will forgive one another and so that we will go to one another and work things out and fix the things that are broken. We need to clothe ourselves with Jesus. And that's found in Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 14. So instead of showing our fake emotions and who we want people to see, we need to clothe ourselves with Jesus so that they will see him in his loving heart, in his loving actions, in his forgiveness. So this morning I want to challenge you to act like Jesus and to love like Jesus and to be your true self, not to try to hide your emotions, but it's okay to let people know that you're hurt and that you're broken and you need help. And that's part of the job of the church is to, uh, for us to all come together and to love one another and to help one another. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, help us to be our true selves before you and before others. Forgive us of our sins this morning, and if we have sinned against someone, if we've hurt someone, help us to see that and help us to go to that person and to forgive them or ask for forgiveness. And, and if we are hurting because of what someone else has done to us, Lord, help us to have the strength and the courage to go to them to work that out, Lord, to restore our broken relationship. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed day. Let us unite in this historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please pray with me. Amid the countless things that human beings cannot fully comprehend about God, there stands this. God so loves us as to bathe us with grace and feed us with mercy and forgive us our sins. Confident in the love of God, let us pray together. Lord God, while we were still slaves to sin, you died for our salvation 
Yet we still worship the false gods of the world, forgetting that you are Lord. Loving worldly wealth, we have not loved you with our whole heart, nor loved our neighbors as ourselves. Trusting worldly strength, we have not trusted your word, nor followed the word made flesh. Forgiving by worldly norms, we have not shown mercy to others, you have shown mercy to us. Forgive us yet again. Hear the good news of the gospel. Who is in the position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. All-knowing God, you know our needs before we name them in prayer. All-caring God, you care enough to hear our prayers anyway, knowing that all we truly need is your love. All-loving God, hear now these prayers that name the needs of your people. Your people need health. Your people need peace. Your people need hope. Your people need blessing. Your whole creation needs your powerful presence. All-powerful God, the need is so great. We rejoice that you are greater. Hear these prayers, we pray. In the name of Jesus the Christ, our Savior, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hear this invitation to the offering. Let us be glad in our Maker and rejoice in our King. Let us praise God's name with dancing and music. Let us bring to God our tithes and offerings. Let us pray. Ever-present God, just as Jesus promised to be among us, when two or three gather in his name, be among us now, that these offerings may become instruments of your love and justice. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Your gifts, your offering can be mailed to the church. Lafayette First United Methodist Church, Post Office Box 704, Lafayette, Georgia 30728. Or you can give online at LafayetteFUMC.org. Thank you so much for being the sustaining power in all of our ministries. God bless you.
Join me in this prayer of illumination. Holy Spirit, as your word is read and preached, pass along your gathered people, opening minds to increase understanding, opening hearts to bind us together in your love. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hear the scripture reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. Hear these words of the Lord. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Here ends the reading. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Last week, the disciples heard from Jesus just what kind of Messiah he is. He's the kind of Messiah who comes to give his life. No one takes it from him. He gives it. If you and I are following Jesus and he says that he is the kind of Messiah who gives his life and no one takes it, then that pretty well says to you and me what our attitude is to be. That when we live our life and when we serve, we are to give our life for the sake of Christ, for redemption, uh, for a life that glorifies our Heavenly Father, that brings honor and glory to our Heavenly Father. It's not about us, it's about him, and when it's about him, it's to will good to the other. For our intention for willing good to the other is for what it brings them in their relationship with Christ and, and neighbor. Today in the book of Matthew, we read concerning some uh, ideas, a prescription, if you will, how you and I can remain in fellowship if something happens that drives our relationship in the ditch. There's times when our relationships may end up in the ditch and it's easier just to leave them there than to try and to get them out. Someone said that they went to a European uh, country and uh, they noticed that the uh, wrecker services over there that went after uh, wrecked automobiles and all weren't called wreckers. 
on the side of their truck. It was called recovery. Today, Matthew gives us some ideas as to how we can recover. Recovery is not easy. In this Labor Day weekend, recovery takes work. Forgiveness takes work. It would be great if all we had to say is, oh, I forgive you, forget it, and let that be it, and that's all there was to it. Sometimes just to say, I forgive you, isn't enough. Even John the Baptist called those to repentance and said to them, bear fruits of repentance. There are things that you and I are to do when we change our mind. There are things that you and I are to do when we change the direction of our life. There's some things that we used to do that we don't do anymore because our life has been saved from that which was destructive. Now there are things in our life that are salvific, redemptive, and we share those with one another and to the glory to God. Matthew begins by saying, if there is a member in the church who sins against you, go to that person and point out their fault alone. If you win them back, you have won that one. Some of us may have experienced this. <clears throat> we have gone to that person and have sat down and have shared with them where they have sinned against us or where they have gone awry. And they have given us time to express ourselves. They have really listened to us. They listen to what we say. They don't think about what to say before we say it. They watch our facial expressions. They hear our words. They hear the tone of our voice. And they see that they have contributed in a way that they did not intend to. Therefore, they apologize. They ask for forgiveness. And we may even in our conversation listen to them as well as they've listened to us and find out that it takes two to tango and maybe we too have contributed to this broken relationship. So it's not just one who has fallen, it's both. Therefore, both need to confess, both need to uh, say I'm sorry, both need to begin again, both need reconciliation. And we begin again. It takes work. I will know if you are repentive and you will know if I am by how we treat one another. We are important enough to treat one another in this way because before this story was told, Matthew tells us the story about the lost sheep. You will recall the lost sheep. There were 90 and 9. There's 100 sheep and one is lost. Well, instead of just taking the loss and dealing with the 90 and 9, the shepherd goes after the one. You and me may say, well, who in the world would leave 99 and go after one? Well, probably not any of us, but God would. For we are all dear to God. The scripture says that it is his will for us all to come to repentance. It is his will for none to perish. It is his will for all to come to repentance and to find salvation in his son's name. Therefore, he will leave the 90 and 9 and go after the one. And when he finds the one, he'll bring it back on his shoulders and he will call us all to rejoice. He even says to us that there is more rejoicing in heaven over one repentant sinner than there are 99 righteous persons who don't need repentance. I don't know about you, but there are times in my life when I feel like that one sheep. There's times in my life when I don't know if I'll ever be recovered or if someone will value the 99 and leave me alone and just let me die. Am I valuable to anybody? Will anybody leave the 99 and come after me? Will anybody value me enough to come and to call my name and to find me and to put me on their shoulders and to carry me back and to rejoice because I, who was once lost, am found again and have joined the flock. That happens sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't always happen. Sometimes we don't let it happen. Sometimes we're sort of like the Israelites. We're sort of stiff-necked people. Sometimes we're hard to get along with. Sometimes we don't like to bend. We don't like to take that metaphor of being a palm tree. We're more of an oak tree. We'll stand against the wind, yet when it blows really hard, we're the ones who seem to fall. 
But sometimes when we fall, there is someone who is there beside us, who's willing to be with us and to raise us to new understanding. The gospel says that if there are those who will not listen to the one who goes to them individually, who doesn't go and gossip about it, but who goes to them individually, and no gain is received from their conversation, then they are to go and to get two or three more respectable people who care for all persons involved, who desires for reconciliation to come about, who's impartial, if we can find those persons, if we can believe that those persons actually exist, who will come and who will help us to try and reach reconciliation. Sometimes there are safety in numbers. Sometimes those persons who will come and sit with us to help us uh, think out loud and with one another can help us see things. You know, sometimes we say four eyes are better than two or three heads are better than one. They can help us see things that maybe we didn't see, hear things we didn't hear. And then if it becomes even harder than that, then it says to tell the church. I believe what that means is a group of people who care about the two individuals who can't seem to bring it back together. People who do not want to see them apart. Those who want to see reconciliation. Those who want to see them working again as the body of Christ works. But also those who have experienced sometimes it's best to work apart when we can't work together. But that's the last scenario. Sometimes it's good to give people some space to pray and for them to pray, for them to think about it, because sometimes being away will draw us back. Many times the Holy Spirit will speak to all persons involved and something will happen that will bring us back together. We didn't plan it. God has planned it. And it happens to us and we experience what we've been praying for, what two or three are agreeing on, who promises to be among us is there. Jesus, he's among us. And what the Father wants is restoration. And what the Son wants is restoration, redemption. He wants us together. He doesn't want us apart. That's his will. That's his desire for you and for me. On this first Sunday in the month of August, today we celebrate Holy Communion. The bread represents one loaf that we all partake of. It represents one cup that we all drink from. The bread represents the body of Christ that's broke for you and me. The cup represents his blood that was given a new covenant for you and me. And he gives us a new covenant. He says, love one another. Well, we've heard that before, haven't we? Love one another. How shall we love one another? Jesus helps us to know how. He says, as I have loved you. You and I are aware that we are not to judge one another. We are not to take the splinter out of our neighbor's eye when we have a log in our own. But you and I are to judge soberly. We are to make decisions when we have all the information that we can gather to make a judgment. We aren't just to leave it alone and to let it work itself out, though sometimes that does happen. Sometimes it doesn't get better. In those situations, sometimes it gets bitter. Jesus says that you and I are to take the initiative to bring about reconciliation. After this story is told, Peter asks Jesus a very important question. He says, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother? Seventy times. And then Jesus says this. You know this verse as well as I do. He says, not seventy times, Peter. Seventy times seven. Now, the old math says that's 490 times. But the new math says, as many times as your brother asks for forgiveness, forgive him. Why do we forgive? Because we believe people change. Do they change overnight? No, not always. Do they change in our lifetime? Not always. Do some people never change but remain the same? Yes. 
sometimes that is true too. But we believe in a God who is present in our life that when we are praying for one another and treating one another as Christ has treated us, we believe that in their lives as well as in our own, God is working among us and that it is his will, his prayer, his desire to put our hands together. It is his desire that if your heart is like my heart and if my heart is like your heart, some famous Wesleyan said, then give me your hand. Of course, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as you break this bread, and as you drink this wine, let him become your brokenness and his blood by grace you speak the name the name of Jesus Christ let him become your life through his brokenness The night is gone and the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day. Let us put on the Lord Jesus Christ. May the creator who made the light, the Christ who is the light, and the spirit who ignites the light within abide you and me, all creation now and always. Be with us and be a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.